Welcome to this intro to PostGIS. Before we get into PostGIS itself, I want to talk a little bit about databases generally, as well as spatial databases and what differentiates them. The term database is usually used to refer to the whole system of storing and querying data. It's helpful to think of a database as two discrete pieces, the storage and management of data, and the interface that allows the user to insert, update, and retrieve that data. The fact that a database helps abstract away the storage and retrieval of the data frees up the users to derive meaning from the data itself. Any database can hold geospatial information. Your standard SQL table will accept any string or list, so you could certainly put in a well-known text string or a list of coordinates. But being able to query your data at scale using geospatial queries requires using databases with those specific capabilities. Wikipedia has a very complete list of databases with this functionality. I want to call out a few specifically, and hopefully we'll make videos on some of these later. MongoDB is an open source NoSQL database and quite powerful. NoSQL databases can be an amazing choice when you don't have a defined schema. Mongo itself is incredibly fast and I've enjoyed working with it. There's a company behind it who offers an enterprise version. If you're not familiar with NoSQL, thinking of the data it stores as more like JSON than rows and columns is a natural comparison. Redis is an in-memory database, so if you have a lot of memory, not a ton of persistent data, or a high velocity of data, or just want to be able to access this data from multiple machines, it's pretty great. Because it's in-memory, there's a huge speed advantage that goes along with that. It also has a publish subscribe capability, so you can broadcast out messages to computer clients that are subscribed. It's often not obvious to people the implications of all Redis has to offer, but I've used it over the years and have found that it's quite powerful and useful in coordinating processes between machines. Elasticsearch is another NoSQL database. It's blazingly fast when set up correctly and scales amazingly in a large cluster. I personally find the search syntax difficult to remember. When I've used it, I've designed my queries once and then never touched them again. I suspect it becomes much easier if you use it frequently, especially with the Kibana front end. Neo4j is a graph database and is incredibly popular. Graph databases have a ton of uses. I definitely recommend looking into them if you're not familiar. SQLite is an amazing tool for creating databases when you don't have or need the full infrastructure to set up a larger SQL database. And having a spatial addition to it is very cool. It's excellent for prototyping, for small projects, or when you need to have everything self-contained. Postgres is an open source SQL-based database that allows extensions. PostGIS is a very popular extension that allows the storage and querying of spatial data to be run natively in SQL. NoSQL has been a popular buzzword in recent years due to its flexibility, but there are still so many use cases where SQL is the best choice. When you have a set schema, choosing SQL allows you to do object relational mapping in your code, and when making something like a spatial website, this is very powerful. I'd like to create an additional series talking about Flask and PostGIS, where some of these concepts will be explored in more depth. PostGIS seems like the natural starting point for exploring databases with spatial components, especially since it ties in with GeoPandas natively. In the next video, we'll cover getting a local version of Postgres with PostGIS running so we can work with it.